This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 665 for July 20th, 2020. Power level? Pathetic. It's under 9,000! Welcome back to another episode of that video game podcast. I'm your host, Boston Dreamy. As always, is Moonpeer. Hello. And the Nimp. Hello. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M on the ones or numbers. Get all the cool behind the scenes, early access, two month early access to uh, Critical Misses. That's uh, starting to air on the uh, the public feed here. So uh, you can get uh, the, the majority of the Fast Saga right now uh, over on Patreon. Uh, $5 a month is the best tier that gets you everything. You get all the cool audio. I get some help paying for the show because uh, it's not cheap, and uh, mm-hmm. everybody wins. Um, uh, also, we have a new goal. Please share yes. us that goal. Uh, two hundred. <laughs> Thank you, Moon, for the uh, heart emoji in the live stream. Uh, two hundred fifty dollars means that I play Resident Evil Seven live on stream and probably cry because I'm a giant chicken. So, uh, if you want to, uh, <laughs> if you want to get that done. Patreon.com like, slash you one To give everyone an idea, this is the same guy who literally refuses to play these games. Like, he mm-hmm. won't even play them not streaming. No. Too much of a chicken. I don't like it. We, when you do this, we need to, like, you need to stream it out. Like, tell us when you're doing it so we can jump in and, like, watch on Discord at the same time and get our mics involved. So right. we can just heckle you while you do this. <laughs> Mystery right. Science Theater it. Yeah. Look at this baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, patreon.com slash E1M1. Uh, and I think, oh, we have a brand new episode of uh, Game Club Recap out right now for Saturday Morning RPG. <laughs> if you want to watch three grown, nearly 40-year-old uh, adults struggle to find something positive about a video game, you should probably listen to that episode. It's uh, mm-hmm. probably the saltiest and angriest thing we've ever put out on this show. Uh, and yeah. And we don't do that often. We don't we really, smack talk stuff. Part of this show, the the ethos ever since I started the show, has really been one of my the early rules for the show was if you like something or if you hate something, you have to explain why. You know, it, I'm sure everybody has listened to something or watched something or read something where it's just like, I hate this thing and it sucks. See you later. It's like why like like, how do you you clearly feel strongly about this because you made something why do you feel the way you feel um so a lot of that episode was us saying like these things are not great in this game and sort of breaking down why it's not great and how it sort of breaks common conventions in video games which uh is frustrating in its own right so uh that should be in the feed right now uh, if you're listening to audio version of this um i think that's it so let's start off with you moon Pier. what have you been playing this past week nothing no not no. nothing we'll start i skipped out on dead by friday this week okay. um so and i also basically haven't touched apex legends this week because some personal issues have been going on for those who follow me on social media you will know that one of my cats is currently in a rough shape and Mm -hmm. we're trying to step by step our way through that current process yeah so honestly i haven't really felt like doing a lot this week yeah but i am a warrior (laughs) and i will continue to fight on to produce content for this show Mm -hmm. so i literally played so much f1 2020 you have no idea and i didn't even play the my team mode i was just jumping into online races and smoking fools there you go listen to podcasts Uh, smoking fools (laughs) Yes. Uh, I mm. got my first online victory and that sweet, sweet Chivo that goes with it, mm. um, which was hilarious because I literally, it was like, it wasn't even three people. If it was three people, I'd be lost, let's sell it, celebratory about it. <laughs> right. But there was like 12 of us in there and somehow I got pole position. I got a really solid start onto the first corner and as always happens in Formula One races, 
someone came darting up my inside and tried to basically take that line and bump me off. Yeah. I stuck to my <clears> guns. <throat> I took the corner. He wheel to wheel kissed me. And then he spun out and I kept on going straight. There you nice. go. And then I just left everybody else in my dust. And like purple, 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 purple laps the whole rest of the race. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's like six laps on online mode I was doing. <clears throat> And just try to stay way away from everybody. Yeah. I was just like, I am just gunning it. I'm using my ERS the best I can. Enjoy the Formula One lingo for those who don't know Formula One. That's right. Sorry about this. <laughs> Purple means good. Um, good yeah. lap time. Yes. <laughs> um, I I was just flying. And then I, last two corners, I was a little bit squiggly. Like a little bit too curb happy and almost spun out on like the last two corners. No. And I was just like, no, 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 get this under control. Right. You've only got like four seconds on the person behind you. You can do this, right. just calm down. Breathe it out. I made it through the last corner, came out, took the checkered flag, and then immediately got that little kaplunk sound. Sorry, mm -hmm. I got the shwing kaplunk sound because uh -huh. it's a rare achievement. Yeah, all right. Um, with the, I think it's called showing off, and it was like, win your first online race. And I was like, that's great. I never have to do that again. I'm happy. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that now. Because... It was one of those things where it's like, okay, I lose Hamilton bit, I got pole, I led from the start to the end, and nobody could touch me. Yeah, that's awesome. Which is not usual. It's right. not, a, <laughs> right. not something that happens with me in this game. But other than that, like, I've just been, honestly, I've just been experimenting with different laps, because I, like, or different courses, because I just jump into an online lobby, do a quick race, because it can, it's like a 20 minute to 30 minute per race kind of experience to That's do qualifying bad. then the race and then you're done move on to the next one whereas in the career mode it's like an hour each race mm. and this entire week in my brain has been like do you want to do this for an hour i don't know we'll just do it for half an hour and then let's see how we feel <laughs> your brain that. just answers like Buh. <laughs> yeah my brain's been answering answering that question for like six months at this point but yes <laughs> but then I'm sitting there and I like I played all I played a lot of F1. And it a lot of F1. Yeah. That's good stuff. Too much <clears throat> F1 F1 2020. It bit at the perfect time. The season yeah. just began. The game just came out. Like there's a whole bunch of coincidences lining this up to be, hey, this is perfect timing for you to really want to pick up this game. And it manages um, to be a really great game at the same time too. Yes. And I I love how customizable it is. I don't know if I mentioned, but Codemasters made it, so you know it's yep. a good racing yep. game. Yep. Like, they have the pedigree to do it, so that's great. Um, hashtag um, Series X enhanced, please. Right. Um, give me, Smart delivery give me it up. That, yes. Give me that. Give me that goodness. Yep. But it, honestly, it's just been a good, again, stick a headphone in listen to some podcasts mm -hmm. um weirdly enough i was actually listening to the 2019 shift f1 podcasts while i was racing in f1 2020 there you go because i needed something to distract my brain but it's it, it's a great game it sounds good it feels good i love so much about this and it's been so long since i've played a serious racing game because I love Forza Horizon. Forza Horizon is one of the best racing games out there. Oh, yeah. But that's, in my wife's word, that is get a Mini Cooper, send it around the corner sideways, and just enjoy what <laughs> right. happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's not exactly a sim. Like, even if you turn up a lot of the uh, stuff and, like, turn off a lot of assists, it's not still not really going to be a sim. No. And I don't have the patience for drive club or the club or yeah. gran turismo or even the baseline forza games at this point i was just like no just just mm -hmm. give me the arcade stuff just give me the goodness of of that kind of stuff this is a good balance of both mm. and it happens to be in a category of sports that i'm genuinely invested in and have been for like 30 years now <laughs> right so. do well, i guess that's a good thing do yeah. a lot of the online racers actually race the way they should or is it like every other racing game where first corner everyone's in a wall it's interesting because <laughs> you have two ratings you have a safety rating and and, and basically a, a ranking mm -hmm. and your safety rating depends on how well obviously you drive safety wise 
cutting corners get you black, the black and white flag. Continue to do so, you'll get time penalties at the end of the race. Yeah. Oh, okay. Most people seem to be absolutely fine. Most people are like understand how Formula One works, mm-hmm. and they will try and get you up the inside corner, and they'll overbreak. They'll they'll shoot it off to the off the edge of the. They'll land stroll it and send it straight into the you know <laughs> the runoff outside of the corner while you just cut up <clears> the inside. <throat> Or they'll try and go around the outside, but there is a genuine genuine understanding that, like, I'm going to slowly come out and then push you a little bit, and then it's up to you if you want to stay with me and then we both spin, or you can back off a little bit. Right. So far, it has been a relatively fine experience. I had one time where I think someone wasn't paying attention to the braking zones and plowed straight into the back of me. <laughs> But other than that, like most people, they're aggressive. They're a lot more aggressive than Formula One drivers would be because Mm. you don't have to worry about, you know, killing yourself in this car. But generally, they have been pretty respectful. Everybody understands, like, everyone does the whole Formula One thing as well. I don't know if it's intentional because I haven't seen people do it, but nobody does the wiggly worm down a straight to try and stop you. There you go. Everyone does the... I'm going to move over. This is my defensive line. If you want to take me, you're going to go around the outside on this corner and do your best. Mm. Everyone seems to follow the actual Formula One rules, which is pretty good. But also on Xbox, the the multiplayer pool at most is 2,000 people. So it doesn't surprise me that those 2,000 people who bought the Formula One game the week it came out <laughs> right. pay attention to the Formula One rules. Yeah. I'm sure if I was to play the Formula One 2019 game, which is on Game Pass right now, that's oh, a boy. whole different kettle of cakes. Yeah. That's probably <laughs> a lot more risque, shall we say. Now yeah. fools flying off the track. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like having the collision on is great because... Like yesterday, I did I did a multiplayer race, and flashing back to last week's Styrian GP in real life, the whole Sergio Perez has a broken front wing, and Lando Norris is catching him really quick. I did that to somebody in the game because mm. the, the guy came over my radio. It was the last lap. I had like five corners left, and my engineer came over the radio and was like, "The car in front's got front wing damage and is going really slow." And then literally on the last corner of the race, I cut up his inside and I overtook him and I took the position from him. It's like, nice, great. Just like real life literally happened last week. Yep. That's cool. It's like, okay, I I got my money's worth. Even if I stop playing this game now and never play it again and don't go any further in the my team mode, mm-hmm. I 100% got my money's worth. Hashtag probably just a game for me. Think about it before you spend the money. <laughs> right. Because that... I know a certain somebody in this podcast has been debating it since I started talking about it last week, Nimp. I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> just like, yeah, man, a little bit. But, you know, I'm just saying, if you, if you happen to get it on the Xbox, we could start a league. Oh, know? hello. There's, there's leagues, and we could have races every Saturday, and I'm just saying. There you go. Putting it out there. Be one more <clears> thing <throat> for my wife to give me side eye on. It's like, it's bad enough you're watching it, and now you want to play it. I can't hear you, I'm racing. <laughs> I'm sorry, the calls are really loud. Vroom! <laughs> well, I'm not kidding, they really are, because like I have to, like when I'm sitting on the couch and I'm playing it, if my wife talks to me, I'm like, what? Huh? What? Huh? All she hears is, bruh, 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 bruh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm in the you pit, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, pits are so good. It, it, the game is so good. How, just... how many times have you run into somebody in the pit? Um, I have it on pit assist, so oh. as soon as I hit the pit okay. lane, it takes over Boo. because I <laughs> I, turn, <laughs> I turned it off and I do, was doing it manually, but the pit line is like the speed limit line. I always overcompensate on brakes, so I'll hit, hit hit into the pit lane and then immediately start braking for the pit line, which is, you know. 10 car lengths away and I'm going two two kilometers an hour for a 60 kilometer an hour <laughs> right, speed yeah. limit. It's right. Like, well, I've just wasted five seconds of my race just breaking way too early. Oh, right. So I have it so that it assists me in the lane itself and then I have to do the clutch and accelerate to get out. So as soon as you get dropped, depending on what racetrack you're on, you'll either have a light or you won't. 
So it's a case of if you have a light, watch for the light to turn green. Mm. If you don't have a light, it's as soon as the car drops and hits the floor, you have to accelerate out. Yeah. And the guy on your radio is like, go, 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 because <laughs> I can never get it timed right. <laughs> some of that, though, like some of those pit lanes that I've seen, where especially if there's more than one car pitting, it looks like there's enough room for your car. And that's a. Yeah. A, yeah. And then it's just people standing there, wait, uh, like hoping that they know what you're doing. And it's mm-hmm. like, mm. if. <laughs> if you ever if you're ever watching Formula One and you want to get really scared, watch for the guy who works for the team. I think it's in front of the box that they're coming into. So when Mercedes are coming in, watch for the guy who's in the pit box before him. Because they have all of the pneumatic cables and stuff that come out on bars mm. and then hit the floor. So you'll have a guy standing there just holding it back like a curtain. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you'll see this Formula One car drive past it with like his front wing like two millimeters away from this guy's legs <laughs> right as he's trying to come into his pit box and it's just like dude you're the bravest person on the track right? yeah, it's like brushing his leg hair pit lane <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> and there's a reason there is a speed limit there yeah well even just the guy with the front jack who he's just standing there and there's been times where it's like the track's a little wet it's like uh-uh screw that yeah like i'm, I'm not yeah <laughs> i'm scooting over uh d- during um, pre-season testing and stuff like that, in real life, they'll occasionally have like the drivers do other jobs as like a, a bit of a media hit. So mm. like, oh, here's Lando Norris changing a tire. Um, and he was set to sign up for McLaren as Alonso was leaving McLaren. And they put a, they put Lando Norris on the front jack when Alonso was coming in for a pit. <laughs> and Alonso always goes long. He always hits that front jack pretty hard on every single pit stop. Oh, no. And Lando tweeted and was like, they put me on the front jack and Alonso goes long. Coincidence? Question mark. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you brave, brave people. Yeah. But no, Formula 1 2020 is a hell of a game. And... As I mentioned, it might not be for you. Yeah. You'll know if it is for you. <laughs> if you have no, glazed over you. for about the last 15 minutes, it's probably not for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you're interested in Formula One, go do some Googling on it. There's plenty of resources out there to get into the sport. That's right. Or go and listen to our pre-show stuff from, I don't know, January, February this year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where I slowly but surely rope these two people into, you know, yeah, come on, come on, take the bait, take the, the bait. F- F1 really? brainworms. Uh-huh. Dude, I was hook, line, and sinker um, on that. Yeah, like immediately, <laughs> yeah. you're like, "Yep, this is for me. I love it." <laughs> <laughs> and it all started with Drive to Survive. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's yeah. a good Go show. Watch that. We'll we'll see if you like it after that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the only other game I played this week is Kingdom Hearts three, three, three. I should specify three, three point eight. No, just three. This Get away from me with that. 100% not the game that I thought you were going to talk about. No. <clears throat> How are you liking well, Kingdom Hearts 3? I have been playing Everspace, but that's a Wii Rogue like it. Patreon.com slash E1M1. Yep. I'm going to start playing The Return of the Oberdin, but that's a Game Club game. That's right. Come back in four weeks. That's right. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I didn't know what to play, and I'm going through my games list, and like, Subnautica, Astronia. Kingdom Hearts, mm-hmm. Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, so do, do, there's like ten other games which I'm like eighty percent of the way through. Oh right. A, a a little kiss and a little push over the line, and I'll be done with them. Right. And then I can forget about them. I can uninstall them, and I can get some hard drive space back. Hashtag ninety eight percent again. Whoop, whoop. Thank if, you, Game Pass. Boy, if there's a game you ever just want to finish up and forget about, it's Kingdom Hearts three. I say, is this exactly. because I played the mod last week? <laughs> no, <laughs> this is because I want it off my drive. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I was so excited for that game. That game came out last year, correct? Yeah, yeah, because like, I had it on my top last ten. Year, I think. <clears throat> yeah, it came out last year and. I was so excited for another Kingdom Hearts. Especially on Xbox. I played it. <clears throat> and I played it really hardcore for like a week and a half. Yep. And then I got sick and fed up of doing the stupid bumper car rides <laughs> and the, the rapids. The pirate ship. The... It takes yeah. forever. I got fed up of all of that stuff and yep. I stopped playing it. And it has literally sat on my hard drive since. Yep. So... I want to experience it. I love Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. 
I genuinely do. I'm one of those weirdos. <laughs> Ditto. And Kingdom Hearts 3 is a solid game. Yeah. Yeah. But I just I just wanted to go back and get so like again, it's the achievement hunter slash frugal nature of me. I wanted to get my money's worth. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna play through. I'm gonna see the end of the game, which is not really the end of the game because I know there's DLC coming Ugh, for it, which yeah. is also the end of the game. Whatever. It's already out and apparently it's like <sighs> impossibly difficult, so I, I already tapped out. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanna go through, I wanna get the 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 warm fuzzies when I get to a new planet and like, oh cool, it's that planet. Yeah. Oh look it's Toy Story. If, yeah. I still don't know if Tron is in this one. I hope it is, but uh, I, I don't, don't even think it remember. Is. I don't think it is. I don't think so. Yeah. I know it was in two because that was one of the reasons I picked up two on day one was yep. oh boy, I got this copy of Games Master and there is Sora, Mickey, and Donald in Tron outfits. Yep. Kingdom Hearts two, come on down. <laughs> I think this one was just all the newer ones from mm-hmm. the yeah. last Pirates of the Caribbean <clears throat> up. Yeah. Yes. Even then I think it was only like six worlds. Eight or six worlds. That like Pirates that world was rough. Yeah. As they always well, are in these games. <clears throat> Yeah. The one downside is I didn't realize exactly how little of Kingdom Hearts I'd played. Mm -hmm. So I just hit Enchanted. Uh, Tangled? Yes. Okay. That one. Yeah, that's uh, pretty early. I haven't even scratched the surface of this game yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) So I guess I got some Kingdom Hearts 3 to play. I mean, and yeah, it's, it's good. I like I said, I enjoyed the gameplay. Genuinely speaking, yeah. I I am not going to hit Y ever. No, no, I was just like, going to say, like, period. as long as you don't hit Y for the rest of the game, you'll be totally fine. Uh, exactly. I am going to I'm going to smash, dodge, and magic my way through the game. Mm-hmm. Get away from me with all that attraction stuff. And what's so crazy is, like, I feel like we had this complaint when we first started playing it last year. Those attacks aren't strong enough. It's not like a summon in the Final Fantasy games where it's like, yes, no. this is clearly like I'm in a one shot, whatever's in front of me. It's like I did maybe like 25% more damage. It's like, cool, I just it's literally wasting my time. Yeah, I could have yeah. done that in more in DPS alone. <laughs> yeah, like I could have just exactly. hit them with my keyblade and be done by now. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna hit Y. Smart. I'm gonna do the basics to get me through the game. Yep. And I'm going to see how I feel as I go through it. I may end up giving up on this because too many games to play. Like I was honestly I was torn. I was going to restart Alien Isolation because oh, okay. I'm only I was only like one chapter into that game right. before I stopped playing it. Um or I was going to play this. So I I'm not in the mood for a game where I have to think. Kingdom Hearts, I don't have to think. <laughs> so just jumping in mashing A. <laughs> Exactly. Mashing A, hitting X a whole bunch to do the dodges, trying to remember every time I'm out of combat that B is jump. Oh my Thank God. you for that stupid control scheme. Oh, I forgot about that. Square. Yeah. So. <laughs> Come on. I, Metal Gear, I, I get it, because that's a, a really Japanese game, and don't get me wrong, yeah. this is too, but that came out at a time when controls... If you were playing a Japanese game, you knew Circle and X are flipped. Right. Like, you knew that at that point. Yep. This is the first game I've seen that's done the Circle and X are flipped since then. <laughs> right. Like, back and forth in the same game. But remember, this yeah. game's been in the making since then. Since then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. But, I mean, immediately, immediately, and I'm not kidding, I immediately felt fed up of all of the crap coming out of everything mm-hmm. it, i can't remember who it was or what video it was but i watched a video talking about dead cells and if you're not playing dead cells but watching dead cells it's just a vomit of explosions of colors <laughs> at all times yep. <clears throat> that's how this game feels because i'm hearing mm-hmm. people and little xbox logos are coming out and it's like why yeah. is ping, this ping, their ping. xbox logos yep. <laughs> What's yep. all this stuff flying out of them? And then they die and they explode in money, which is still so stupid to me. Yep. Um, and items come out and everything. It's just like, this literally feels like it was designed for a kid with ADHD. Mm-hmm. It's just always something going on at all times to grab your attention. It's a it's lot. There's like 
five things blowing out of that. So there's what? There's the your gauge filler, health, MP, mm-hmm. items, HP. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's about five and, things and money. blowing out yeah. of something. Moonies. Yep. Yeah. Man, I don't know. Like I said, I wasn't in the mood to play anything this this week, and I just went with the comfort food, Formula 1 2020. All right. And I need to get some of these things off my list, which I will be roping in probably Rob, um, friend of the show, Rob, um, who can is one of the few people I know experienced enough with Astronia to allow me to jump in build a mining car and just take it to the center of every single planet and be done with it and just oh, right. abandon that thing at the because at the... right now the way i have it built <clears> is <throat> i have a huge thing which i dig all the way down with path it down and then reverse all the way back out with oh uh, okay which takes time right now i'm not in a let's take some time and patience mode right now i'm in a Let's build a thing, put a giant drill on the front, and then just go. <laughs> Abandon it at the center of the planet, and let's go. Put a stone on the gas pedal and just get out. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm hoping to do. So uh, I'll probably jump back into that, but I just, I'm just i feeling the need to clear up because I don't feel like I can clear up right now in my real life because it's 2020 and nobody's allowed to go anywhere. So, so two-point hospital. <laughs> two-point hospital is on my list, too. Yeah. It's, mm, dude. My install games list is ridiculous. Yeah. And there's a lot of Game Pass games on that, which I know are limited in time. So it's like, I should play these. That's why I'm playing Nia at the moment. Oh, right. But I just, I needed a break from Nia. I needed a break <laughs> from that insanity. Y- yeah. You, you gotta, you gotta dole that out in, in small chunks. <laughs> I'm, whatever is going on in that thing is fine. Glory I to can mankind. Go f- yes. <laughs> uh, I can, I can go from that to shiny colors coming out of things to right. brum brum race cars <laughs> right. so right. it's a it's a nice little trinity i can go here where i don't have to think about kingdom hearts <clears throat> it's the most important thing right now i have to think about formula one mm-hmm. i do because i have to time my braking the zones the turns the angles don't don't do the usual stick thing of full lock left full lock right when you've got like a two degree corner you have to kind of think about that and it's good because it it's focusing me a little bit, but sometimes you just want to smash things and watch the world burn. I mean, sometimes you just want to smash things and watch <laughs> shiny things come out. That's right. No, I want to watch the world burn too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but no, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Mr. Nimp. Let's well, talk about rehashing old games. Uh, Star Ocean Last Hope. Oh, wow. I have a long... Hold on, hold on. Before we go... Star Ocean series, this is the map drawing one. No. No, that's Etrian Odyssey. Yeah. <clears throat> what are the dude? I don't know. They, you guys throw out so many names. They all have I don't know what BS they names or just like throw these three things in a hat. There we go. Star Ocean. Yeah, you're, mm-hmm. you're general whatever. But anyway. Yeah. This is the three sixty version of the game. No. Oh, well, okay. <clears throat> so this came out originally on the three sixty. Mm-hmm. And I bought it then. I uh-huh. sold it then. Mm-hmm. I bought it again later because it was like $2. <laughs> I stopped playing it, and then it was on sale on PS4 like years ago and bought it again. Oh, right. I have never beaten this game. <laughs> I mean, there's a good reason for that because it's there is, not and I was good. Re- reminded of it very quickly on probably why I keep dropping it because the characters are annoying as hell. <laughs> uh-huh. It has that young girl who... The like young magician girl who's like really yeah. monotone. Loom. Yep. Says K God, after I, everything. I hated this game so much. So every time I've played this game, I've gotten a little further before I've dropped it. <laughs> um, but I, I it sounds like Musen playing Vampire. Uh, the Last Masquerade. I made it. I think three hours into this game before I dumped it. I. The last time I had played this, I made it pretty far into it mm-hmm. and for some reason dropped it. And I don't remember why. Yeah. But, and I don't even know why I picked it up again this week. It was just, <laughs> I've had it sitting on my hard drive forever. It's that JRPG collection thing where it's like, yeah, all right. I guess. Hmm. But this is also the game that broke me on getting achievements and trophies and everything. Uh-huh. 
because if you go to the trophy guide to get 100 percent in this it's anywhere from 900 to 1000 hours depending on your rng it's just like an ascii middle finger where it's like don't even mm-hmm. don't even do it it's it's not worth it it's not worth your yeah. sanity but uh yeah so restarted it i am i have defeated the second boss which the boss fights in this game suck mm-hmm. because at least the major ones because you're doing one point of damage no matter what level you are yeah. you have to fix you have to figure out their weak point for you to do any real damage and it's just a long fight where i went from my main character is mostly just an attacker you go in there you hack and slash you're good to go this one i had to actually stop doing that because your ai is so dumb that they keep putting themselves in situations where they're dying and they're not healing properly mm-hmm. so i had to switch from being an attacker to full-on healing and reviving oh, boy. and i think this last boss fight that i did took about an hour and a half <laughs> yeah <laughs> and this is on easy by the way yeah <clears throat> yeah because I didn't want to deal with the normal, because that's what I always played on, and it always sucks. Yeah. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to see if I can just walk through this. And no, I cannot. <laughs> God. <laughs> but yeah, all the characters are annoying. Yes. Edge, who you play as, is a whiny little baby. And, like, one of the dumbest people to be in video games. Just, like, yeah. staggeringly stupid. It starts out where he's mad because he's not a captain. And I'm not talking like teenage angst mad. He's just annoyed that he's not captain and somebody else that he knows ended up becoming captain. Mm -hmm. Then he becomes a captain. And then it's like 25 minutes of him being, well, I don't think I'm ready for this. I don't know if I can do this. They made me captain so early. Yeah. It's like, (laughs) step up. You're the one complaining that you didn't have this. Do it. Yeah. (laughs) Um. Raimi, who is your, who turns out to be your first officer and is also like a childhood friend or something, whatever. They and this goes are. full on anime tropes too, which is the other kind of annoying thing, like old anime tropes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> she's all right. Like she's not necessarily annoying. She's just the overprotective friend. Yeah, like big sister friend sort of. Trope. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no real she's issue fine. with her. Although I have noticed that the camera angle for her at boss always homes in on her butt Uh uh-huh it's one of them yeah i didn't remember it ever doing that but yep that's a new feature in the international edition i guess i think so but (laughs) um yeah lemel roll pairs around the world that's right lemel who's the little girl that we were just talking about yeah real monotone voice says k after everything most annoying character so far it it broke me i i just i it it, and she's always like and we'll go to the next village k it's like oh my god shut up please and then there's phase who's an alien character who's okay Mm mm-hmm I don't have anything bad to. I mean, he's not great for for a party member, yeah. But his character isn't bad, so I don't know. I don't know why I felt the need to play this again. <laughs> Are you punishing but yourself for something? I, did you I do guess. something wrong this week? <laughs> I, I didn't play any Bloodborne, so I felt like I should be. There you go. That's your yeah. penance. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Either I suck at one game or get hurt by another. That's, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> so. I don't know. Um, I'm on, what is it, the fourth area, which was the Flying Fortress, Mm -hmm. which I think is where you get your fifth party member, because there's like eight or nine characters in this. Yeah. Which I've never gotten all of them. Um, So, (laughs) I'll just see how this goes. I'll probably play a lot of it while listening to a podcast, because I don't want to listen to it. So, that's it. Played a a lot of that. Um, Next game after that. Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. Um, Did you? Yeah, that's in my installed list waiting to be played. So yeah. you mentioned in Discord that you were interested in starting this. And uh, the 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 piece of advice slash warning that I gave you was um, there's some culture stuff at the beginning in this game that might turn people off. But the game kind of pushes that aside pretty quickly. Like the game... Yeah. 
there's like hacker culture, internet culture that it leans really heavily on at the beginning. So if anyone wants to play this, because a bunch of us just got it for free with um, the uh, Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah, the Ubisoft Select or whatever, whatever they called it. Um, so a bunch of people have it for free. If like the culture and attitude stuff, especially the dude with the mask on, if that stuff is driving you nuts, just kind of like push through the, the that at the beginning of the game. So the funny thing is, yes, you get like maybe two minutes into this thing before they start dropping video game references. Uh-huh. And it's stupid annoying. Yeah. Um, The mask guy is actually one of the few characters I don't have an issue with. Okay, good. Everyone else I kind of hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, the game really tries to make everyone seem super cool, but at the beginning, no one has really earned it. Exactly. The antisocial guy is okay. Yeah, he's a, he has a he pretty good storyline. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. he's he talks when it's important for him to talk. Mm-hmm. And he's not annoying. He's not one of those guys of, oh, no, I'm like the most, you know, super elitist hacker ever. Right. Blah, blah, tap, blah. Tap, tap, tap. I'm in. Yeah. Which there's a lot of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the characters will probably start coming around. I'm not like the characters aren't going to stop me from playing this game. The game yeah. is, if anything, the game's going to stop me from playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, th- I think Watch Dogs 1. Yeah, and I think the one thing that they do that's really smart is they introduce you to the whole local dead set crew. And then pretty quickly, it's just your main character. And like you'll do maybe do a mission for each person every once in a while. But it's kind of just you at that point. And the main character, once he gets out on his own and like you can explore the the open world, I feel like that's when he gets really good. Yeah, because I mean, I've I have a main mission which i've barely touched Mm -hmm. but it's mostly just been me wandering around figuring stuff out doing random stuff or actually i take that back with the main missions i got to the point where you had to steal a car oh right basically kit from knight rider but not yep that's you know that's a really fun mission yeah (laughs) yeah um but most of it's just been me wandering around being like oh if i go into basically detective mode i can see these lines and they all go to a different junction boxes and oh if i do that it unlocks a thing or you yeah. know whatever so it, it's been a lot of wandering around doing that but yeah the the whole hacker culture that they have set up for this is just the dumbest thing mm-hmm. <laughs> like i i turned to my jrpgs for the dumbest thing right this is the dumbest thing <laughs> yeah and it just like I I liked it at some point, like and I especially love the aesthetic of Dead Cell, uh, Dead Sec, like the cool black and white grayscale yeah. stuff. Like I think a lot of that is cool. There's some great looking graffiti in the game, but really early on, it's just sort of like, ooh, all you guys kind of suck. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let's talk about escalation in this game. Oh, God. Is that the PvP, like, multiplayer stuff? No, 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 no. No. Okay. Whew, thank God. I did have somebody pop into my game who immediately popped back out. Good. Both but of you that's Both of it... you had the best experience. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm talking about enemy <clears throat> escalation in this game. Mm. Because with the last mission that I was just talking about where you had to steal a car, mm-hmm. you have to go to, like, several different locations. But the first one that you go to is basically a film industry parking area where they've you know think right. warner brothers all yep. right so you have to go into like one of those buildings to steal a script mm-hmm. there's regular security guards that are your quote-unquote enemies and all i have i have a stun gun i have a pistol and i have an assault rifle mm-hmm. i'm purposely just using the stun gun just because i always love games that give you stun guns because they're fun yeah so no, for the win. yeah exactly so I go through, stun the first couple of guards. Someone happens to see me. I stun them, but not. They end up radio off for backup. Mm-hmm. All right, whatever. <laughs> it's just more people to stun. I don't care. Right. <laughs> Front door opens. There's like ten security guards, like just regular security guards in this area, like this film set with a mm-hmm. full film crew and like all of these people. <laughs> And these guards start lobbing grenades into the crowd of people. I'm like, all right, whoops, three things here. One, you're a film set, right? 
two, your security guards. <laughs> and three, I have escalated this to stunning you, putting you to sleep. I haven't killed anybody yet. Right. So – Why are you bringing out the grenades, man? Yeah, so they start lobbing grenades, which I hadn't seen up to this point. So I see the indicators come up, and I'm like, what is that? And I'm like, oh, that must be a grenade. And I roll out of the way. And all of a sudden, 10 civilians are dead because they literally <laughs> threw it into a crowd. I'm like, screw this. Right. Switch over to my assault rifle and just mow down all the security guards. Because at this point, I'm like, if I don't kill these guards, all these people are dead for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> which, really, yep. in the grand scheme of the game, it doesn't matter. That was just a random really feeling the game at that point you know really pulling my role playing there yeah so, <laughs> so that was a weird escalation point and then on top of that when you steal the car you automatically get like you're basically a three star wanted level mm -hmm. which means i have a helicopter i've got every cop in san francisco after me yep because i stole this prop <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of weird yeah I also found out that I have the ability to hack um, sewage pipes. <laughs> yes. All right. So I was thinking, like, basically the manhole cover in the middle of the road, I can hack those now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, okay, I can somehow hack this manhole cover and that'll make this blow, you know, the man cover up into a car or whatever. Like the first one with the water pipes or whatever. We're just. Pfft. Yeah. Yeah. No, man, this takes out like a, a quarter city block. Like <laughs> yeah. I I hacked this thing and I was pretty far away from it in my own car because I just wanted to see it do what it was going to do. Pretty far away from it and it still blew me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what is this? Yeah. So as I'm doing this chase with this film car prop, I'm you can set them up so that way they have a uh, perimeter or a, like a proxy, basically, where if anybody goes through it, it'll set it off. Oh, right. So I'm setting like every manhole cover as I'm driving past it, the proxy, and it's blowing up like everything <laughs> blocks behind me. And my right. rating keeps going up because not only am I taking out cops, I'm taking out civilians, too, because this blast is right. so massive. So that took a while to get away from. <laughs> I managed... I managed to get on the highway, which was a bad idea because there's yeah. nothing to hack on the highway and I didn't right. have the ability to hack other cars. So then I had to turn around, drive the opposite way on the wrong way to get mm. back so that way I can get back into the city and hack stuff. Managed to get away from the cops. I pull into like this harbor area and like out of nowhere, this squad car just plows into me, <laughs> knocks the car into the water and I have to redo the mission. Great. So water is still us. an issue with me with this game. <laughs> yeah. God. But yeah, did did it the second time, stayed off the highway, everything went fine. Yeah. But yeah, the the game's pretty fun so have, far. Have you unlocked the three D printer yet? Yes. Um that okay. was how I was able to get my um my first <laughs> I gun. That, that game has a three D printer. Well, it it's really cool because the two of the biggest upgrades they give you really early, and it's the like the RC car thing and yep, the, the drone. jumper. Yeah, yep. the jumper and the drone. The drone is so overpowered in this game because the range on it is pretty crazy. And I don't know if you start with it or it's, if it's an early upgrade, but essentially you can use the drone to hack other stuff. So like you're sitting. Yeah, you start with that. Yeah, so you, like you can sit a block away from the place you're trying to hack, and you're it's like the the eagle in Assassin's Creed. Like you're way above it, and you're marking dudes, you're hacking stuff to take people out. You're like hacking radios and blowing up cell phones and stuff. So by the time you roll up on a like a house or something, everything is cleared out, everything is opened up, and you can just kind of sneak your way right in there, and that feels really great. What, one of my favorite things to do, and I've been able to do it about three times now, is when I've had to go into an area that's full of people, is I will just run through it. That way I grab everybody's attention and they chase me. Mm -hmm. And then I basically run around the block, come back around, shut and lock the door behind them, <laughs> shut and lock the door that I just came through, do what I need to do, then start blowing stuff up, and then just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> that's great watch Dogs 2 is great yeah so oh, it's man. it's pretty fun the, the characters are a little full of themselves mm -hmm. which that's the other thing that kind of annoys me so it's like the very first mission 
they are watching your character do dead sect is watching your character do something yeah and they have basically their own online names that they'll every once in a while refer to each other as oh but right. whenever they talk over open communication lines or they're watching someone they always call each other by their actual names yeah i'm just like gosh. dumbest thing ever i i think a lot of that stuff not to spoil anything but um i think a lot of that stuff pays off when your group of people just gets their teeth kicked in like the game they the game does it. a really great job of being like oh we're you know we're hot stuff and the game just takes a boot right to your face and it's just like Good. okay <laughs> because they're so cocky that it's annoying and yeah i whatever i felt like it paid off later we're just like hell yeah all right we sort of got your comeuppance a little bit well <clears throat> um last game that i played this week it's a biggie ghost of shishima oh uh, yeah yep yeah um I originally was going to skip this game for a while just because I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. But I had an extra gift card, so I figured, screw it. I'll pick it up. It's the only thing coming out for a while anyway. Whatever. And I really like this game. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Musum and I were talking about it yesterday. And uh, he reminded me that Sucker Punch made it. And I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. that's right. Now I got to play this because I really liked all three Infamous games a lot. That was kind of the other thing that, because normally for me, I wait for a game to come out, unless it's a JRPG, because generally I know what I'm getting into. Yeah. But a lot of times I just wait for a game to come out, check the reviews, see what people are feeling it. But, like you, I like all the infamous games. Mm -hmm. Sucker Punch seems to be a pretty decent company. Yep. It's like, yeah, I'll just buy it sight on scene. Whatever. Yeah, it'll probably be good. Chances are good. And this game is beautiful. God, it really is. Um, golden forest, bamboo forest, forest forest, grasslands. <laughs> Got all the forests. <laughs> yeah, all of it looks awesome. Yeah. Tall grass everywhere. The when you're playing the game, you basically have no HUD mm-hmm. until you you can swipe up on the um, trackpad on the controller. And then whatever you happen to be tracking, the wind will start to blow in that direction. And then like a little thing will pop up on the top left that says, hey, this is what you're tracking. This is how far away it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. After a while, that goes away. So it's just your character and everything else in the world. That's it. There's no HUD. Oh, wow. Until you start fighting. Then on the very bottom right corner, you get you know, your HP and your resolve. And that's mm-hmm. it. Wow. All all the rest of it is just something shiny happens. You know, you happen to see something shiny or an enemy is about to do something. And so you have those visual cues to know what to kind of expect. Mm. But it's like a pretty naked HUD and it's pretty awesome for this game. Nice. They take a lot of visual cues from old samurai movies Mm -hmm. where the very first boss that you go up against, you're on a bridge and it's like, a wide pull-out shot of you being on the left side of the bridge, the boss <laughs> being on the right side of the bridge. Right. They're just staring at each other. Yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> and there's, like, lightning going off in the background. There's wind and rain. I mean, it's awesome. Hmm. The other fights that you've gotten into, I've only been into, like, two other boss fights. One was kind of a coward, so that fight never happened, so that story was kind of cool. Okay. The other one, they basically do kind of like a showdown um, where someone has challenged you in this quest. Sorry, yeah. um, I, Jim Sterling's been playing this, and he was talking about the showdown, and he's like, it's great because it's like a fantastic mechanic for if you're trying to play stealthily. You can just be like, no, 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 I wasn't trying to be stealthily. I was just giving you a chance to have an honorable fight. Yeah, I didn't fail stealth. I just wanted to be honorable. <laughs> well, that's the uh, uh, standoffs, mm. um, which I'll get into that too. But uh, with this, it's basically you have an enemy character that actually has a long health bar. Mm-hmm. And what will happen, and they don't, so far, they don't pop up a whole lot. But you'll get like this red health bar that just stretches across the top of the screen, and that's the boss's health bar. And then it kind of takes on like this cool little fighting visual cue, like a fighting game visual cue, where all of a sudden you're looking at the enemy, 
and then you're looking at yourself, and then it kind of puts you both left and right of each other, and then it's game on. Oh, and you interesting. Can still move ar- you can still move around and stuff. It's not like locking you into a 2D you know, field or anything. But it's just cool how they go about all the camera angles and stuff for this. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful game. They've got a photo mode. I haven't used it yet, but there's been a couple times where there's something that's happened. And I'm like, oh, I want to take a photo of that. <laughs> my my Twitter Ooh. feed has been all full of uh, Sushima yeah. stuff where it's just like, that's- man, this stuff looks so good. That's kind of so, why I haven't done it because I figured everyone else and their mom that's playing this game is probably doing that as well. Yeah. So, um, foxes in this game mm-hmm. are awesome. Yep. Um, coming, like I said, coming into this, I didn't know anything about this game, so I saw a fox and just decided to follow it, and mm-hmm. it laid led me to an Anari shrine. Which once you get enough, once you've prayed to enough of the shrines, you unlock extra charm slots, which are basically buffs for your character that you can throw in there. Oh, okay. Eventually, the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to find a fox den, then the fox is supposed to lead you to an Inari shrine, and then that happens. But sometimes you can just find a fox out in the wild and then just follow them too without finding their den. Mm. The best part about that is sometimes after you've prayed at the Inari shrine, the fox will still be there. Mm-hmm. And you can pet the fox. Hell yeah! And the fox <laughs> is super happy that you're petting it. Yeah, that's awesome. the stuff. <laughs> um, there are a lot of animals that you can follow. I just started figuring out that uh, there's these golden birds in the world that will lead you. I don't know if they just lead you to any points of interest in the game. So far, it led me to one place where you can compose a haiku, and then you get a piece of equipment. Okay. Um, another time, it's led me to a hot spring. Which you go in there and reflect on, you know, random stuff that's happened, mm. and it increases your maximum health. Ooh. And I had another time where it led me to this kind of small waterfall, but I haven't been able to figure out why it keeps leading me there, because there's, as far as I can tell, nothing there. Hmm. So, Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but with the creating haikus, you basically sit down at a certain location and your character just kind of looks out at the vast expansion and there's points of interest that you can click on and each point of interest there's uh, like a short like three four words Mm -hmm. that you can choose any of those and then the scene will change a little bit it'll still be within the same area but a scene will change and focus on something else and there'll be another list that you can choose from. You're basically looking at this scenery with the camera, and there's different points that you can select. A oh. couple more words to add, and then you'll have another scene change, and then same thing. And then your character basically creates a haiku <laughs> based off of whatever you've chosen, and that'll get you a piece of armor, which so far have just been bandanas. Um, but then the bandana that it creates for you the haiku that you created is associated with that. Mm. So if you wanted to remember what you did for like the golden forest haiku, you can go check out your golden forest bandana that you got and your haiku is right there. Right. So that's pretty cool. The aren't the, some of the art armor matters for your character and some of it doesn't. It's mostly cosmetic. Mm hmm. Um, like the bandanas, they don't give you a buff or anything like that. They just look cool. The different types of actual armor that your character can wear. Like right now I have him wearing a, um, clan samurai armor set. Those you can upgrade with the clan armor that I have. I have it upgraded to the point where I take like 15% less damage and it increases my maximum health by like a certain percentage. Mm Mm-hmm. I also have a Ronin, which is a straw hat swordsman Ronin looking costume, which increases the melee attack that I have. And it does something else. I don't remember what, but then I also have a traveler one that if I keep upgrading, that increases the amount of (coughs) fog of war that I clear on this Island. And my, it makes my controller vibrate whenever I get close to artifacts or relics or anything like that. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. So you've got a guide. Oh yeah. yeah. (laughs) So there's, All kinds of different armor types so far that you can get, and they all do different things. Um, The horse that you get at the very start of the game 
you get three choices between basically black, white, and gray, mm-hmm. and then three different names, and that horse will stay with you for the entire game, and it keeps the name that you gave it. Nice. I named mine Nobo, just okay. because it seemed cool. <laughs> right. Um, and I picked the gray horse. And the thing about the horse is it does the thing that I've always liked since Witcher 3, <clears throat> which is if I'm running and I whistle for my horse, the horse will run up next to me and I can just jump onto it while I'm still running. Yep. And then make the horse yep. run. Yep. And it's awesome. The weird thing is controller wise for this is that normally when you, to make a horse run, you usually have to hit X. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, cross, whatever you want to call it. Um with I this like tomato, dude. <laughs> yeah. With this, you just have to click um the left thumbstick down mm-hmm. and the horse will run, which I haven't played a whole lot of games that I mean I've played a lot, but I've never played a a game that has a horse in it where you click down the thumbstick to make your character sprint and your horse sprint. Oh right. So every once in a while I keep forgetting and I tap X to make my horse run faster and my guy just jumps off the horse. <laughs> but this isn't like Red Dead where if you jump off your horse you're taking like 80% damage. He's <laughs> no a samurai. About. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's a samurai. So he jumps off the horse and he lands on his feet and the dude is like sword in hand ready to go. Mm. Which is awesome because I've ran into a battle with my horse and jumped off of it like that and completely took apart a guy in one swing in midair. Nice. So that was pretty awesome. You can do horse battles um, where you just, you don't even have to dismount. Your guy will just stay on top of his horse and attack people and you can run into people with your horse. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, The standoffs. Um, You can go, if if you go into an area that has enemies in it, before they fully see that you're there, you can challenge them to a standoff where you just hit up on the D-pad and your character will yell out, you know, send me your strongest warrior or whatever. And then it turns into this awesome looking, again, fight scene where your guy's on the left, this guy's on the right, and the camera's just behind your character slightly, maybe a little bit more out. And all you do is you hold down the triangle button... And you wait for the guy to attack you, and you release the triangle button, and he basically one-shots that person. Oh, wow. And Interesting. It's pretty <clears throat> awesome. They just started, at the point I'm at now, they just started adding in where the enemies will do feints. So mm. they will look like they're going to attack you, but they're really not. And if you don't pay attention and give in to that, you're going to take a lot of damage. Interesting. Because you're pretty much leaving yourself wide open to be attacked. Which sucks. I had that happen once. So, <laughs> right. um, but yeah, the standoffs are pretty cool. Um, you can unlock more abilities to do more than one standoff, where you're basically chaining standoffs, where you kill a guy and then kill another guy. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's a max of two or maybe three. I haven't really looked at it that much, but it's just a lot going on with this game, and it's really awesome. Yeah. The the <laughs> the way your character levels up is you just complete missions and you don't earn experience so much as you're gaining and inf- well I don't even know if it's really influence but basically you're letting yourself be known because you're pretty much the last samurai on this island oh like you're helping people so you get like renown or whatever yeah basically yeah. and at certain points um, you get technical points which you can put into your abilities mm-hmm so the more missions you do, your renown gets better. You start unlocking more things. I'm not very far into it, so I haven't unlocked a whole lot. But there's a ton to unlock, like stances, uh, your oh, wow. ghost abilities, which is basically more along the lines of like ninja stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to like fall, heal faster, or fall higher, taking less damage or no damage heal faster, being able to revive yourself. You know, there's a whole wide spread of stuff that you can put points into. Mm -hmm. And that's on top of upgrading your weapons, your bow, you know, your ghost equipment, your armor. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this game to customize your character, however you want to play it. That's cool. And a lot of people, I've been seeing a lot of people, especially with the ghost stuff, comparing it to like Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. See a lot of people comparing it to Souls games because 
everything's a Souls game now, apparently. <laughs> right. If you have, um, like, one-on-one combat, apparently it's a Souls game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree that it could have some of those elements. It definitely doesn't have any Souls elements in it. Unless mm-hmm. you're playing this on, like, the hardest difficulty, then yeah, probably, because the game's probably hard. Yeah. But some of the Assassin's Creed stuff... I can see because I did accidentally jump off of a cliff and assassinate a fool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. Yeah. But you can play this game however you want. It's an open world game. You can either do full on samurai and not touch any of the ghost stuff, or you can do all the ghost stuff, not touch samurai. You can do what I'm doing and do a little bit of a mix of both. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, there's only been one mission where I've had to stealth. Okay. And even then it wasn't difficult. It was mostly it it felt more like a suggestion where I went into an area and it said kill like three people without being noticed. Mhm. Okay. But it <laughs> seemed like if I didn't do that it would have been fine. Oh, okay. So, but you it's not that hard to do. I mean, you have a bow. <laughs> right like <laughs> so, and, and even if you don't i mean it there's a lot of tall grass and stuff there's a lot of ways for you to get into an area and check things out which i really like so there's a lot of ways for you to tackle a lot most of the areas that you can get into mm-hmm. the other major thing is the island that you start on is pretty big and i was screwing around with the map and realized that i can zoom all the way out and there's an even bigger bigger island to the north of the island i'm on (laughs) oh man this game is going to go places yeah um the only bad thing that i have for this game and it's not necessarily a bad thing is i was talking with a couple people about the voice acting Mm -hmm. the voice acting in english and japanese both seem fine you can switch back and forth whenever you want you can switch the subtitles to english japanese you know whatever all they have that's fine um, we were all noticing the lip syncing. Oh, and uh, with when you're playing with the Japanese VO on, you do notice that the lips don't sync very well with what's being said. Okay. However, I've also noticed that with the English VO on, they sync better, but they're still off. Oh, okay. So just. Don't pay attention to the lips. It's like the first Life is Strange where it's like, eh, these don't sink and that's fine. And that's kind of the thing too is it's kind of funny because anime in general has always had this issue when it first started out and it's a lot better now. Yeah. And I feel like this is the opposite where it's an English company right there in the US. Sucker I Punch? I think so. Yeah. I believe so, yes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> It's an American company having the issue where they can't get the Japanese to sync. Right. To, right. Yeah, so it's it's basically just flipped. Right. Um but I I am playing with English because I did start out with Japanese, but the problem is is that there is a lot going on at one time. Again, anime trope sure. where <laughs> you're trying to read and there's a ton of things happening, but the difference between watching anime and this happening and playing a game is that I'm trying to do things and not die yeah, while trying yeah. to read what's happening. So maybe once I get a better grasp on the game, everything I might switch it or maybe on another playthrough, I'll switch it over. But right now I am playing in English. English sounds fine. sounds great. The Japanese for what little bit I played it of sounded fine. Sounded great. Mm-hmm. So it's a really awesome game. That sounds really I good. I really like it. And yeah. I didn't know that I wanted to play this game until I started playing it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. That's all I've been playing this week. What about you, Boston? Uh, super short for me. Uh, Joy-Con report. <clears throat> the Joy-Con yep. that I just got back has yeah. drift. <laughs> uh, I noticed it starting to happen because um, usually when I'm – laying in bed and i'm winding down at the end of the day i am playing binding of isaac um usually i can get like a run or two in depending on how fast a run is and i've been playing isaac for six years at this point five years i don't even know um so it very much is a comfort food game i noticed that i was dying which doesn't really happen anymore um show off and it's it's because when i'm 
pushing the stick to the right, it's pulling back towards center. So, like, I'm trying to dodge to the right, and it's just like, no, man, you're not going anywhere. Um, so, to say that I'm really frustrated by this is largely underselling it, uh, because I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do now. Because, like, I, I literally just did the thing you're supposed to do, and they got me brand new Joy-Cons, and they are immediately broken. <laughs> I've been playing with them for like two or three days and they are broken. So, <sighs> so I don't hold know. my breath. <laughs> yeah, like apparently the, you know, getting the fixed ones is not the solution. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. So uh, that'll be this week is figuring out what I'm going to do. Um, Destiny 2 did uh, two uh, large milestones this week. Um, I'm working on the Moments of Triumph stuff, which is like a celebration of the last year of Destiny. Um, I finally did the Leviathan raid, uh, which was really good. Um, And now because the content is old and soon to be retired, it's really easy. Um, so yeah. it, it, it was kind of nice kind of blowing through a raid that, um, I had never done before, but only took us kind of a couple of tries on each encounter to get through. And then we one shot at the boss, like the very final boss. It was super easy. Um, that was a blast. Uh, the, uh, Bill Sever, the Han and I did the new dungeon this week. The one that launched with this season. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen it, it's like the like the vapor wave dungeon it's a lot of like pinks and uh kind of cool neon lights and stuff like that like it's, it's a really cool dungeon um spoilers for its mechanic coming up um it's a really neat thing because the whole thing about the dungeon is killing certain enemies whether you're in the dark or in the light drops different things and you need a certain amount of those things to kind of keep going on uh in the dungeon so juggling that stuff while you're fighting like three bosses at once and doing this this puzzle where the room keeps turning uh like the hexahedron you you solve the puzzle on one plane you know one side of this room you go in the middle and the room turns so you have to solve the puzzle on all six sides of the room um some really really cool stuff Um, i'm glad we finally got around to glad we finally leveled up to the point where we could actually do the the dungeon at this point um and uh moments of triumph so far is good um i I like moments of triumph every year because it's it's kind of cool to see how much i have done this year and then um this year they have in they've because these old raids are going away since a significant amount of the the game is going away uh, it was going to be in September, now November. Um, they want you to have, like, go through all the raids again. And when you complete them once, it basically just kind of gives you everything in the raid. Um, so it's really... As it should have been. Well, and it's it's annoying stuff where it's like the, the hardest raid in the game, Spire of Stars, um, gives you this really fun emote, but it was always a random chance from the boss and now when you beat it and you redeem the triumph it gives you all the shaders for that um for that raid and it just gives you the the emote so it's like if you haven't done it or you just rng just hasn't been on your side for it it's you can just go finally get it um so that's why i did leviathan that's the first of six raids i need to go do the next two are going to be really short and then uh, the other three is going to be pretty long um, but still enjoying Destiny 2. Um, and lastly, I wanted a comfort food game this week. I, I'm I'm kind of done with Two Point Hospital, um, and I was hoping for something to fill that slot of, like, I'm paying attention to it, but, you know, I can talk to my kid and the game isn't going to blow up because I wasn't paying attention to it for two minutes. Um, so I popped in. Well, now it just blows up. Yeah. Uh, so I popped in, uh, I fired back up Stellaris. Um, and I, I thought like... joke about that too. Yeah. And I was like... SimCity 2020. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, all right, I know Stellaris. Like, I know how to play this game. I'll start a brand new uh, 
universe, I will set it to like the easiest setting and like make all the growth really fast and the research really fast. And I'll just kind of like blow through a playthrough of this and just kind of have fun. Put you have a couple of other um, uh, species in the same universe as I am, but kind of all make them nice. Like I don't really want one person just sweeping through and destroying everything. Um, and that worked really well until I looked at Earth and wanted to start building it up, and everything is different now. <laughs> uh, that patch finally hit consoles. Um, and boy, uh, management of like your, your planetary sectors, uh, trade routes, uh, populating planets, all that stuff is 100% different. I think they made the right choice to completely revamp all that stuff because all of it all of it removes so much of the micromanagey stuff where it's like before you'd have to each planet would like have 16 tiles and you'd really have to manage kind of puzzling out where to put stuff to kind of complement with each other and make sure there's enough housing and stuff all that stuff is largely gone. You have like a number of tiles you can apply on a planet and you just pick between the four different, it's like housing, industrial, commercial, and food. And you just kind of pick enough of those to add up to the total number for your planet. And then you just build those and the planet largely kind of takes care of itself. Um, so I think with as much as management as there is sort of micro and macro, uh, as there is in that game, taking that level of management out, I th I think was largely a good choice, because um, a lot of that just seemed like busy work before. Um, and as I colonize more and more and more planets, I'm really happy that I don't have to go in and just start like managing all these tiles and stuff. Um, so it it's it feels a lot better uh, now. Um, I'm to the point where I've gone through. Uh, I've had it on the fastest setting, so I think I've gone through like 200 years or so, um, and I just surpassed the strongest uh, species in the universe, and I, I have now taken the first spot in points. Um, so whenever it hits, like I'm at like 23, the year like 2,300 something. Once I hit 2,500, I, I should be in a good spot to win the game um so are you gonna wreck everybody or no trying to um trying to make a federation trying to have everybody you know have open trade routes open commerce deals share research you know th this this isn't my uh squash them like bugs playthrough it's very much like yeah it's like share knowledge let's open our borders and let's be friends and have a federation and stuff like that like let's all get along um, there's, Sounds like a trap. Uh, probably not. Uh, one one species wants. I posted on Twitter. Probably like every couple of months, they'll send me a message that's just like basically a middle finger. They just hate my. They hate the human race. They just. They essentially they just want to eat us. Um, and looking i i recently looked at you have like a contact sheet of all the races you've run into and like you're standing with them whether or not they're part of your federation and then like relative power level to you um like the 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 race that i just usurped for the first uh spot like their power is overwhelming um because their technology is still much better than mine is um but this race that keeps insulting me <laughs> Their power rating just says pathetic. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> the game just very much says you can squash them if you wanted to. It's like economically, techno technologically, um, uh, my military might, all of that is just by far stronger than they are. And like if I at any point I could just kind of sweep one of my fleets through their through their planets and just destroy them. Um, and I thought, I, I just like that it just said, like, pathetic. And I was like, yeah, man. All right. I like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Stellaris is, is great. There's, looking at the the uh, the main page of that game, there's, like, two or three more pieces of DLC on console that have come from, usually the console version is 
a, a significant it's a little bit behind a, a, it's pretty significant before it was like pc was on like version 2 2.5 console was on like 1.3 so it's it's always like pr- pretty significantly behind but it, it, you know there there are difficulties in taking this giant 4x you know, uh, universe simulator management game, putting that on these tiny little consoles. Um, so obviously there's going to be some, uh, thing, but yeah, there are, there are like two or three really big, like $20 expansions for this game. It's like, uh, I don't know if I'm ready to like keep going down that rabbit hole right now. Let's, let's try and get through like one, regular i'm like building a dyson sphere right now so like i've got enough on my plate as it is i I, I gotta be able to build a ring world next um and try and get through some of that stuff but stellaris is still really good um and i I don't remember if it's on game pass still or not um it it was for a while i know it is on pc um and if it is on and on xbox one Go give it a shot. The tutorial is really good. I genuinely didn't know if I would like this game or not. Um, and it's my first 4X game. Um, but it, it it's really, really, really great. Um, and it, you can pause it, which is great. And that's, that's pretty much all I need out of a game right now is just, can I pause this game and have it not do anything while I have to go deal with a kid having a meltdown? Um, so two thumbs up for pausing. Uh, and that's all I played this uh, this week. So let's take a break. Let's talk releases for the week of July 20th, 2020. Carrion comes out PC, Switch, Xbox One. It comes out uh, Game Pass day and date. Um, I Does it come out PC and Xbox One Game Pass day and date? I know it's at least Xbox. Uh, very good question. I don't okay. know. Yeah. Uh, either way. <laughs> someone, say, someone in the background says, yes, it's coming out on PC. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, I'm I've been watching this game pretty closely for a while because I I think this looks super cool. Uh, if anyone doesn't remember this one, this is the reverse horror game where you play as the amorphous blob monster and you're eating scientists, um, and it, it looks really cool. Uh, I'm I'm hoping this turns out to be really great. Um, and the last game coming out this week got delayed on everything else after the trailer got leaked, uh, but Crisis Remastered is still coming out on Switch, so. <laughs> <laughs> of course it got delayed on everything else yeah i i've never really enjoyed the first crisis so i'm not entirely sure i'm the best person to, re- to recommend crisis 2 was really great and crisis 1 just kind of never really clicked with me um so <laughs> okay so i'm trying to che- use twitter to check on xbox game pass for pc to see if um the Carrion. Carrion game is available on there. Number one, they tweet a lot. It, they really do. Yeah. A lot. Um, <laughs> one of the recommended follows <laughs> was Xbox Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And their description for their account was the mitochondria of the download queue. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which might be one of my favorite stupid uh, things to ever put on social media. Oh, Game Pass. And yes, um, Carrion is coming to um, Game Pass for PC. Great. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Two phalanges right in the air. Uh, all right, let's move on to news stories, which is uh, largely next-gen, or completely next-gen focus this week. Uh, first off, Microsoft is discontinuing the Xbox One S All Digital, which makes sense, and the Xbox One X. Uh, so to clarify, they're not pulling it off the shelves. They're just not making them anymore. And they're going to continue to make the Xbox one S the one with the disc drive in it. Um, they said, quote, as we ramp into the future with Xbox series S, 
sorry, X, we're taking the natural step of pro stopping production on the X and S all digital edition. Xbox One S will continue to be manufactured and sold globally, end quote. Um, this was originally confusing for me, but I, I uh, once I thought through it, it made a lot more sense. Obviously, the S all digital getting rid of that is fine. That's that's not going to be the leading skew ever. So not making that anymore it makes sense. Um, I didn't think stopping production of the X made a lot of sense until I looked at the calendar and realized we're almost at the end of July. And in mm -hmm. like three months, the uh, Series X will be coming out and thinking, yeah, people probably aren't going to be buying a whole bunch of Xbox One Xs right now if the brand new one is going to yep. be coming out. So I guess that makes sense. <laughs> and it helps to get rid of the confusion of parents trying to buy consoles and getting mm -hmm. the wrong X console. Yeah, and, and you know Microsoft is going to fairly soon, at the very least when the Series X launches, have a blowout sale on the Xbox One X, get through the rest of that mm -hmm. inventory, and just kind of be done with it. Um, so that makes sense, and it's... It's nice to see one of these manufacturers actually come out and say, like, yes, this is a thing we're doing. Don't worry, you can still buy them. But, yeah, we're not making them anymore. Instead of, like, we don't comment on rumors. It's like, nah, man, yeah, we're just not making them. You know, the Series X is coming out soon. Go buy one of those. Uh, Microsoft also put out a press release for what they called the future of gaming. A lot of it in there is focused on parental controls and inclusivity and smart delivery. The sort of the stuff we've we've been talking about for uh, 2020. You know, a lot of the uh, the positive stuff that they've already been talking about. Load times of the SSD. You know, stuff like that. They did mm -hmm. announce three new things in there. Uh, X Cloud will be added to Game Pass Ultimate in September for no additional cost, which. Again, stop making a good deal better, Microsoft. <laughs> like I don't. It's one of those things where it's like if you don't have Game Pass Ultimate, I I don't know what you're doing because it just X Cloud works I've, so well. I've seen. I, well, I haven't tried X Cloud as of yet, mm -hmm. uh, but I've seen some talk that the reason they're doing this is gonna, is because they're going to discontinue get Gold. And sure. Have multiplayer go free on okay. the Xbox. And then switch over the free games with gold to Game Pass Ultimate. That would probably make a lot of sense just to say, like, we don't have these two plans anymore. It's just like, look, you can play multiplayer with anyone, whatever, you know, open gaming borders. They can market it however they want. But if you want the additional stuff, like five million free games on Game Pass and you can play them on your phone, you know, uh, they... Microsoft's pairing up with what company? Bitendo, I think it is. You saw their their brand new uh, Xbox controller with the clip on front of it, like the official Microsoft controller yeah. for uh, iOS mm. and Android, which looks pretty cool. And I will probably definitely buy those because I'm in the X the X Cloud beta. Uh, I don't want to break NDA, but it works. And it works pretty well. Um, uh, it that's another one of those things where it's like great. You could have caught. You could have charged more for this per month. Like you could have said, like, if you has another another five bucks a month, and you get Game Pass Ultimate, and all those games are available on your console, your PC, and X Cloud. But they just rolled it into the same thing, which is great. Uh, they made another announcement about backwards compatibility. They said, "quote It's our intent, intent, for all Xbox One games that do not require Connect." to play on Xbox Series X at the launch of the console, end quote. Um, so that's pretty ambitious. Um, you know, Sony has announced that they're doing a similar thing with maybe sort of squishier wording than this. Um, but it's nice to see them say like, yeah, man, we're, we're working our hardest as long as it didn't need Connect. Uh, it should just kind of work out of the box on the console day one. Um, I, I think this is probably – they haven't come out right and said it, but this is probably the end of the Connect, unsurprisingly. But, you know, I, this is probably the point where it's like, yeah, we tried, but, you know, yeah, it didn't happen. 
Um, and the last point was the next few years of Xbox Game Studios titles, that's their words, not mine, will be available for current gen and next gen. Uh, the, the point they were trying to emphasize was we don't want to force you to upgrade. If you're happy with your uh-huh. Xbox One X, you should be able to play Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite and all these other games when we're not going to punish you because you don't have a Series X. Obviously, it's going to run better and look better and load faster, all the marketing stuff over on the new console. But if you're happy with Xbox One X, go nuts. You can play all that stuff there, too. Um, and all that stuff is available for Game Pass, too. So, like, you don't even have to pay anything for that. So um, I'm continually impressed at how Microsoft and the Xbox team are just making the right consumer friendly choices at every turn they keep announcing this stuff and it's like great that 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 would be my dream and they're like yeah man we're doing it it's like okay it just like in black and white just saying yes we are doing this thing great yeah thank you again microsoft continue to seems to continue to do exactly what is best for the customer Mm -hmm. and it's it's good for them but right especially good for us well i mean it's probably good for them at the end of the day and it's definitely uh what was um oh what was that i retweeted a couple weeks ago about that um something we had played that was on game pass oh it was um descenders um where the developer tweeted out that they're like hey we put our game on game pass just because we want more more people play play it and we're getting paid like crazy like it it is mm-hmm. the number of people that they have had turnover from playing it on game pass to just outright purchasing it and the the revenue that's coming through that uh for something on descenders which is kind of like a, a smaller indie game uh has been crazy and nevertheless all the other titles so uh seems like kind of everybody wins um so yep. good for them uh, and the big uh, coming out of uh, Sony this week is that Sony is reportedly doubling production of the PS5 for launch. Uh, coming from Bloomberg, this decision comes after seeing the prolonged effects of the global COVID-19 pandemic boosting the demand for gaming. I think we've been seeing that uh, early days, a uh, lot of uh, demand for Switch. Go, uh, yeah, and, I was going to say, go look at the Switch and the Animal Crossing release and look at how and Ring Fit, that did. Uh, Ring Fit has been mm-hmm. doing really well. Um, but surprise Surprisingly, uh, PS4 Pro and Xbox One X have both been doing really well um, because a lot of people are saying, like, look, if I'm going to be stuck inside, I'm going to buy this cool console that's available and I'm just going to play a bunch of games because maybe they haven't had the time to do it or they had other hobbies that have been taking over. And it's like, well, I guess I'll play games again. I haven't played games for a while, um, and it's, yep. especially on the, the Xbox One uh, side of the the house game pass is a really strong selling point where it's like you spend a couple hundred dollars here you spend 15 dollars a month you get access to 50 bajillion games for free yep. at that point um and i uh, both consoles have been all three consoles have been doing really well because of that and i think i think it's an interesting thing for sony uh to potentially be doubling the production of their brand new console which historically hasn't been a thing for console manufacturers. It's like, we're going to make as many as we can and try and send as many as we can out every week. And if you can't get them, you can't get them, but like we're working as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, so the market must be really strong for them to to produce this many this early um, without even having yeah. a price or a release date or anything. So uh, I mean, even Even if it's not an immediate sellout, like production can they can ramp up production now and slow it down as this as whatever happens happens right and then that will give them overstock to go into next year as well because of signs are flagging that this might not be over by next year so well and a lot of people are also saying that um the shipping industry has slowed down significantly so if you want to get this in as many stores as you can and amazon throughout the world to have enough where it's like we can't ship something for the next couple of weeks, but we already shipped a whole ton, then mm-hmm. y- you make a whole bunch now. And PS5s are going to sell. It's not like they made $5 million. It's like, oh, we sold 10 of them. Whoops. You know, yeah. it's like you'll go through that that stock at some point. Um, 
So really, really interesting. Uh, Sony also came out and, and put out a press release because uh, people had started bothering them saying like, you're not just going to release, you're just not going to put a pre-orders. And they're like, no, like we're going to announce when pre-orders are going to go up. Like, calm down. Everything's fine. Like <laughs> this is this is in the PS3 again. Like you just relax. This isn't the Saturn. Just just chill out. Um, uh, but that's isn't all. Look, go ahead. Isn't it? Isn't it the Saturn? Are you sure? I mean, hopefully not. Uh, that would be. No one wants that. Uh, let's move to questions for this week. Poke Chop Salad wrote and said, do you think there will ever be an instance where you do a TVGP after dark, like a show with more colorful language, topics, etc.? I have great news for you over at patreon.com slash E1M on the ones or numbers. That's our outcast every week. Um, that is, it's usually like half an hour to 45 minutes, kind of on average, um, where we just kind of shoot the poops, except the poops is the S word. Um, and it's yep. uncensored and we just kind of, it's usually like us catching up on what's been going on this past week. And lately we've been talking about Arrowverse shows and F1 kind of regularly amongst all of our other stuff. Um, and then like, uh, the, the break in between segments goes in there too, but it's largely like us kind of hanging out as friends and talking about whatever before we start going live. Um, and, uh, it's it's good every week. Like I, I can I can say that it's um it's at the very least we're having fun, even if maybe we're a little bit punchy or not in the mood to record anything. But um yeah, that outcast comes out uh every week on Patreon. and um, that's Patreon exclusive. Uh so uh, go sign up there for five dollars a month and that gets you everything. Including critical yep. misses, which is we we just started recording season two and uh, we're we're having a blast. It's, that show is a lot more work to do than I think either one of us were expecting, <laughs> uh, but it is it is uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so go listen to that too. Uh, but that's our last question. That's our episode for this week. TVGP TV is where you can find us. Uh, right hand side has everyone to find and follow us. Uh, we just talked about Patreon. Um, go to the merch store. There's a link on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, Nimp is wearing the uh, 90s mascot We Know shirt uh, this week, uh, repping the brand. Um, we just started a brand new game club game. We're going to play The Return of Oberdin, uh, which we chose because I'm tired of the randomizer choosing uh, because of Hell Year. Uh, less surprises <laughs> is what we're what we're focusing on. Um <laughs> And we just started a brand new game over on We Rogue Like It. Uh, so the patrons will get that this week, this Wednesday. Um, and I think that's it. So we'll see you all next week. Bye. 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 Okay, Nimp. Hit me with your titles. I only have like four. <laughs> yeah, I only have three. But I am a warrior. I have that one too. Is just I am a warrior. <laughs> Lord of mankind. Glory to mankind. Or was that what? It, I, yeah, glory to mankind. Yeah. Power level pathetic. <laughs> and two thumbs up for pausing, which is kind of long. But power level colon pathetic. All right, Moon. Uh, give me that goodness. Uh, go, go, go. Since then, exclamation mark. Uh, two phalanges in the air. <laughs> uh, Jimbo Jangle says uh, a show title, I noticed I was dying. I wrote that one down. Um, I am a warrior. Purple means good. I'm not going to hit Y. I noticed I was dying and power level pathetic. They're all good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, power level pathetic's pretty solid. I also I like that one. I also like purple means good, but I think power level pathetic might be stronger. Purple yeah. means good, I think, is funny just because it's out of the blue, and mm -hmm. no one's gonna know what's what that's talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. True. I think I feel more strongly about power level pathetic. Is it power level colon pathetic? Yeah. 
It's whatever you want it to be, Moon. <laughs> what does your okay. grammatic heart say? <laughs> the reason why I asked is because that's what my grammatic heart says. Yeah, me too. I'm okay with that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Circling. I'm ready. It's terrible, but I'm ready. I like it. Yeah. If I just sit here, I'm going to zone out. So. Okay, starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 665 for July 20th, 2020. Power level, pathetic. It's under 9,000. <laughs> I'm no I'm not even going to do anything after that <laughs> I feel like we can't top that so like oh man alright thank you so much uh, everyone for watching thank you Jimbo Jangles for uh, hanging out with us and uh, we'll see you next week bye bye and we're going to stop recording